Hey everybody, this is D Hunter bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to be looking at the Jazzwares Fortnite Legendary Series P1000 action figure. Now, P1000 is effectively a skin of Peely in a robot suit. This skin was available to purchase at the latter half of Season 10. In the cinematic between Season 9 and 10, Jonesy and Peely had to hide in a bunker. It turned out there were no food there. So Jonesy ended up eating Peely, turned him into smoothies and ate on him. And I guess what's left of Peely is what's in this suit. So let's check out the packaging here. So you can see at the top, Epic Games, Fortnite, ages 8 plus, Legendary Series. And Legendary Series means it's the 6 inch figures, not the smaller 4 inch figures. 22 points of articulation, P1000, 8 additional pieces. Here he is flexing. So in the package here, he's got three alternate, I guess, heads, totaling four interchangeable heads. He's got his back bling there, and that is called the Nana back bling. His pickaxe here is called the Peely Pick. He's also got the compact P90, as well as a light machine gun. This side here just says Fortnite, and you can see him at the bottom. Other side, pretty much the exact same thing. The bottom, there is a barcode, in case that helps anybody. And on the back, here he is flexing again, and there's a bunch of newer figures, Eternal Voyager, Drift, Fishstick, Doggo, and Exlord. Doggo and P1000 are part of the newest wave of figures. I got my figure from Amazon.com. I actually pre-ordered this guy back in late February, so about six months ago. I also noticed that Walmart.com has him on their website, but not for shipping. But you can see if your local store has him in stock. So with no further ado, Let's open him up. All right, now that we got the figure out of the package, here he is with all of his accessories laid out. He does come with a back bling called the Nana. He's got a P90 or a compact submachine gun. He's got three alternate faces, totaling four interchangeable faces. He's got a light machine gun, and then he's got a harvesting tool called the Peely Pick. But before we look at his accessories, let's check out the actual figure. So this would be Peely, after Bunker Jones, he had either eaten or drank him to survive. And what's left of him is on the top here in smoothie form on this large robot body. You can see it says Nana Nana on here. Not sure what the BB stands for on the side. But my first thoughts, I don't think this translated all that well into action figure form. I mean, yes, he has the very long, thin robotic legs and arms, but single jointed knees. Single jointed elbows, absolutely no rotation. You can't even move his arms in to do anything. He looks bizarre, but I think it could have been better. Just my two cents, there's just so much that is limiting this guy. So you can see the backside. I mean, basically, this is the only piece of him, and everything else is a giant robot body. Robot banana. And then. Here's the P-1000, broken down as far as he can go, with all of his removable parts detached. Next, let's check out his accessories, and let's start off with his different faces. Here's his first face, looking pretty innocent, smiling, on this crazy robot body, just looks bizarre. Here's his next face, this one looks like he's laughing, laughing so hard that his eyes are shut or squinting. Here's his third face. In this one, he looks very concerned. This is the look you'd have on your face if you're getting stream sniped, or maybe you're at the end game and it's just the one of you versus a team of four. And then his final head. He looks all discombobulated here. Maybe somebody just took him, shook him, found out where his partner was, picked him up and threw him. And this is the aftermath of his smoothie head. And some of P1000's extra faces could even double up as a regular smoothie for your Fortnite figures. Unfortunately, their hands cannot grip it by itself. I had to do this balancing act with Jonesy here. Boy, is that going to be awkward when P1000 sees him drinking another banana smoothie. Now let's look at his back bling. This is called the Nana back bling. Pretty much it's a yellow cape that matches sort of the banana peel look to it. This is the back bling I typically use when using the regular Peely skin. Here he is wearing his back bling. 
And here's his back bling next to all the other back blings that Jazzwares has made in their legendary collection. And here are all the different back blings made by both Jazzwares and McFarlane toys. And even though they do connect the same way through a peg into a peg hole in their backs, they are not interchangeable between the lines as the thickness of the peg is quite different. And here are several of the Jazzwares figures wearing each other's back blings, showing you they are interchangeable between the Jazzwares line. And if you were to take a McFarlane figure and try to put the Jazzwares back bling onto him, it just wouldn't work as the Jazzwares peg is just too thick and it'll never fit. Or if you were to take a Jazzwares figure, try to put the McFarlane back bling into it, it would fit, but the peg is so thin it'll just fall right back out. Now let's look at his harvesting tool or more commonly referred to as a pickaxe in the game. This is called the Peely Pick. Basically it's a wooden handle with a banana at the top. A banana strong enough to chop through brick or steel. Very appropriate for a Peely though, or P1000. Here he is holding his pickaxe, and the way his arms are designed, it's unfortunate you sure can't have him hold it with two hands like I'd like. There's just no way to move his hand toward the pickaxe. Kind of disappointing there. And as he's walking down the sidewalk here, he hears a chest behind the brick wall. Decides to go up and chop his way through, find out what's inside. And not only has he broken through the wall and exposed the chest, but he gained some brick at the same time. And it looks like he got a P90, a med kit, and some boogie bombs out of this chest. And here are all the different pickaxes Jazzwares has made in their legendary Fortnite collection. And they are interchangeable between each of the Jazzwares figures. And here are all the different pickaxes released by both Jazzwares and McFarlane Toys. And I'm happy to say these accessories are interchangeable between both lines. And here are several different Jazzwares figures holding each other's pickaxes. Showing you they are interchangeable between each Jazzwares figure. And here are a couple of Jazzwares figures holding McFarlane pickaxes and a couple of McFarlane figures holding some Jazzwares pickaxes showing you they are interchangeable between both lines. Now let's check out his guns. Both of them are machine guns. The bottom one here, this is a P90 or a compact SMG. Not the first time Jazzwares has released this. And the top one here, this is a light machine gun currently vaulted in the game. This is not exactly the first time Jazzwares has released one of these, but this is the first time this particular mold has been used. They released one in the weapons accessory pack. Here he is holding the compact SMG. This thing is kind of loose in his hands, but it does stay in there, and it's not that hard to get in. Here it is, next to the McFarlane version of the compact SMG. Here are all the SMGs that have been released by both Jazzwares and McFarlane. These five are from Jazzwares, and these two are from McFarlane. Here he is holding the light machine gun. This gun is very large and oversized. And guess what? It does not fit his hand properly. You see how it's kind of leaning there? It's about the best you can do. Yeah, you might be able to get some intricate bouncing act to get it to look good for a second. But take the gun, put it into his hand, squeeze the fingers. It just constantly falls down. I mean, I've tried 15 freaking times. There's nothing I can do differently. It's very annoying. They included a gun with this guy that just does not work with him. And you can't move that arm over to support it because his articulation is so poor. Here's this light machine gun, next to the larger release from the legendary loadout pack on the right. Only real differences are, this one is obviously a little bit larger, and it also has a removable drum. Here are all the different guns released so far by Jazzwares in their legendary series. And here are all the different guns that McFarlane has made that Jazzwares has not. Here are several different Jazzwares figures holding each other's guns, showing you they are interchangeable between each Jazzwares figure. Also showing you a figure with regular hands and arms can hold the light machine gun, no problem. And here are some Jazzwares figures holding McFarlane guns, and some McFarlane figures holding Jazzwares guns, showing you they are interchangeable between both lines. Now that we've taken a good look at his accessories, now let's check out some other accessories or vehicles you can use to enhance your Fortnite collection. So when I pulled out this McFarlane Quad Crasher, 
I did not think P1000 would fit in there. I was just getting ready to trash talk his articulation. But you know what? He does sit on there pretty good. You can't rotate his hands to be able to hold the handles, but it's something. And here he is riding on the back of the quad crasher. Even the pegs on the McFarland vehicle fit the peg holes on the Jasper figure's feet. Pretty cool. Here he is riding in a McFarland Fortnite shopping cart. And here he is pushing another figure in the shopping cart. This is about the best you're going to get with his hands as they do not rotate to hold the handles. Now let's look at him next to the McFarlane glider and launch pad combo set. Here he is with it fully assembled. Here he is, get ready to launch up and glide away. And if you're curious if he can hold the glider, unfortunately no he cannot. His hands cannot rotate and they can't really go in and out to hold this thing. First Jasper figure, they can't use McFarlane glider. Here he is next to a treasure chest. This treasure chest is also from Jazzwares, but is intended for the smaller 4-inch figures. You may think to yourself, how could this chest possibly be for the smaller figures if it's too large for the 6-inch figures? Well, this wasn't actually intended to be in scale with those figures. This is sort of an accessory pack. You'd open it up, you'd get some building material and some guns. Since the treasure chests are such a big part of the game, I'm happy to have one that is at least sort of in scale with the figures. Here he is opening up a llama. This llama is obviously not for McFarlane or Jazzwares as it's just a stuffed animal. But that pink llama has become a staple of the game. You see that, you think Fortnite, and I'm once again happy to have one for my figures. Here he is next to a campfire. This campfire came with a NECA Friday the 13th Jason figure and I thought it would be great to double up for my Fortnite collection. Here he is with a can of spray paint getting ready to tag the wall behind him. Here he is with a bunch of different accessories that came from some previous Jazzwares releases that you can use that'll work for this guy. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at the figure, his accessories, and some other accessories you can use to enhance this guy, now let's check out his height. From bottom to top, this guy's sitting at about 6.4 inches, which is gonna to translate to about 16 centimeters. Now let's check out his articulation, starting with his head, or whatever up here, it can rotate from side to side, it can look from one side to the other, this whole thing is really one solid piece right here, his arms go up all the way around, they can go in and out only the tiniest little bit, single jointed elbows up and down, his wrist here has a hinge, and his fingers have a hinge as well. He would have really benefited from a little rotation right here. If you could rotate his hands, that would fix so many problems. And he would have also really benefited from a bicep cut here. Wouldn't interrupt the sculpt. There's little notches here and down here. Would be just fine. Would have really helped this guy. He's got kind of a ball joint here. Can rotate around. He can also go in and out. His legs here, they go out about that far. Kind of disappointing. They can go up and down, but there's like little notches where each time it can go into place. Really not very fond of these kind of legs at all. Single jointed knees go back about that far. And his foot here, it can go up and down. And then it can't really rotate, but it can sort of tilt and rock all the way around. Now let's check them out compared with some other action figures. Starting off with some other Fortnite figures. So the first figure I wanted to compare him with was Peely from the Jazzwares line. I believe these are the exact same character. Peely ended up becoming P1000 over time. I've seen some great action figure photography with this Peely. And I don't feel like this P1000 has the same eloquence. And here he is with the Jazzwares Peely on the left and the McFarlane Peely on the right. Each of these figures are great, but I must say I think the McFarlane one is my favorite. Here's P1000 laying on a bunch of bananas. Here he is holding a single banana, reminiscing about old times. Here he is next to Doggo, the only other figure in his assortment. And here he is next to the previous four Fortnite Jazzwares releases. 
Here he is with the entire Jazzwares Fortnite Legendary Collection. And honestly, we have no idea what's next. At one point, I was able to order a Ghoul Trooper and Battle Hound off Amazon, but they canceled my Battle Hound, and Ghoul Troopers had no update since February. So we really have no idea what's next. And here he is, next to the entire McFarlane Fortnite collection. And here are all the Fortnite figures that I bought multiples of. You may wonder why I bought so many. I got all the different wild cards to use as the Royal Flesh Gang in my DC action figure world. I got four of each of the variation of the Skull Trooper to use as Scarecrow Henchmen for my Batman figures. I got two Crack Shots to use as Toy Man Henchmen and four Rabbit Raiders and four Night Hares to use as Mad Hatter Henchmen. And here he is in a huge Battle Royale with all my Fortnite figures. As you can see, here they are shooting each other, driving, launching explosives, sniping, healing, gliding, grappling, getting loot, shooting each other, getting as many kills as they can, and more importantly, trying to see who can get the win. Now let's check this guy out, compared with some action figures from different various companies, to see how he fits in both scale and style-wise, in case you would know which lines you can mix him with. We're going to start our comparisons with some smaller lines and work our way larger. Here he is, next to some SH figure arts action figures. Then, with some Hasbro Marvel Legends. And here, with some Mafex figures. Then, with some Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse figures. And here he is, with some Mezco 112th Cloth Soft Goods action figures. And now, with some Mattel wrestling figures. Then, with some NECA figures. And here he is, with some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. Then, with some McFarlane toys. And finally, here he is with some DST or Diamond Select toys. So overall, this is an okay action figure, a very unique design, but definitely has its flaws. I have no problem with the paint job, that is excellent. The sculpt, I don't think translated very well into action figure form. The articulation is frankly awful. There's so many things they could have done without hindering the sculpt to make this guy better. Overall, if I were to rate this guy, probably about 5.5 out of 10. One of the lower ratings of my Jazz Wars Fortnite figures. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.